the PlayStation was home of some of the best games ever made. But it was also home of some of the worst. In the early era of 3D, primitive trends called for primitive gameplay, a time where tank controls were the standard and having full 3D analog control was going above and beyond. But as time went on, tank controls grew less and less common. Analog slowly became the standard. And I have to reiterate on slowly. Survival horror games like Resident Evil and many adventure games like Tomb Raider all continue to use them. Even when something becomes standard, it's still hard to transition away from it. One game that didn't make that transition was Rascal, a platformer game developed by Traveler's Tales. It came out in 1998, which was roughly around the same time that most platformer games were generally getting away from tank controls. And as something that failed to evolve with the times, Rascal went down in history as a piece of poop. I've had people try to warn me about this game, claiming it's the worst thing on the console. Well guys, I did beat Bubsy 3D after all, and I'd highly doubt there's a game out there that could possibly be as bad as that one, let alone on just the PlayStation. So hey, if I can get through that one, I can tank through anything. I mean, like, I could just get two hours of B-roll and then yell about how bad this game is and reaffirm everyone's popular opinions, but that's not how I roll because that's just way too easy. I'm gonna beat this game, I'm going to digest it in its entirety, I'm gonna look for maybe one or two things I think are pretty alright about it, while being fair and critical at the same time. So, Rascal, you got one chance, don't blow it, let's pop you in. Oh, Psygnosis published this. They published a lot of Traveler's Tales games back in the day. Uh, they also made Kingsley, but uh, yeah, we start up, as per usual, with a pre-rendered cutscene. Rascal's roaming the halls of his father's lab when suddenly these aliens inexplicably teleport in and start giving chase. After narrowly escaping them, Rascal finds himself in a room with his father, Professor Casper Clockwise, and this freaky alien looking guy. His name is Cronon, the evil time overlord. That's what the manual says. That's all right. That's a name. He kind of looks like a reboot villain. Cronon accidentally bumps a switch that warps both him and Professor Clockwise away, leaving behind only the blaster that Clockwise was inventing. Rascal picks up the gun and sets out to defeat Cronon and to save his Professor Dad scientist man. This is such a goofy ass cutscene. I feel it runs on a little longer than it needs to though. The thing is two and a half minutes long and not a whole lot other than running happens. It easily could have been cut down at least by a minute. So, here's the title screen. I, I, I don't know what I'm looking at. There's a lot going on here. Uh, we've got a moon, a dinosaur, a knight. I think it's supposed to reflect the game's theme of time travel. You know, how every level takes place in a different setting in time. And of course, there's Rascal, our little protagonist dude. Looking all cool with the backwards purple cap in the shades. It kind of looks like a little she says. All right, let's uh, start. Oh, 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 that's cool. This title screen is not a 2D image. That is all actually rendered in 3D. And when you press start, it just unfreezes. It, j it just goes like that's actually rad as hell. Oh, I see. The knight and the dinosaur are toys of his, superimposed in front of the camera to compose the title screen. Man, that's, uh, okay, I know this game's supposed to suck dick, but, like, I'm not gonna lie, it's left a pretty good impression so far. But it's not long before I start stumbling across reasons people hate this game. Firstly, let's talk about the controls. As I've stated before, it's tank controls. You'll rotate Rascal by pushing left and right on either the D-pad or the stick, and you'll move him forward and back by pressing up and down. Jumping doesn't unlock him from the axis of rotation he's on. When you're in the air, you're still steering him like he's a car. Croc actually had a pretty good solution to this. When you jump, left and right will then move you left and right instead of turning, so when you're making a jump, it's you know, doable. But Rascal doesn't get this right. I mean, hell, even Bubsy 3D did this better. It makes jumping on moving platforms a damn nightmare. You have to know exactly where that platform's gonna be before you land on it, because you can't adjust yourself once you're in the air. You are locked to that direction. If they really did have to stick with tank controls, these problems could have been alleviated by adding strafe buttons. Silent Hill made great use of strafe buttons, and so did Kingsley's Adventure. I I actually never had a problem landing on moving platforms in Kingsley because of them. But here, there's nothing of the sort. You're just stuck with the tank controls, and there's nothing sprinkled on top to make them more comfortable. On top of that, there's the camera. Oh my god, it's really bad. There's no way to control it manually outside of using the shoulder buttons to snap it to a couple of preset angles, but it seems that every single time I actually need that to rotate the camera so I can, you know, actually see where I'm going to go, it flat out doesn't 
doesn't work. Take this room, for example. There's a bunch of horses on either side of the room kicking bales of hay back and forth. These are things you'll obviously have to dodge if you don't want to take damage. However, the camera does not look at the hay, and I cannot rotate the camera to look at the hay manually either, so I just have to run in that direction and pray for the best. This is not an isolated incident either. This is a frequently reoccurring thing. There are far too many times where the camera refuses to give you the visual information you need to properly play the game. I swear, it just does whatever the hell it wants. It's like, instead of operating the camera yourself, you hired a crappy intern who has no idea how to use a camera and he ended up aiming it at his balls the whole time. <sighs> I would say that about 65% of the time, the camera will do a reasonable job by itself, and that is more than half of the time, but it's still not enough. Are these the worst controls I've ever dealt with? No. Is this the worst camera I've ever dealt with? Also no. But when you combine the two, it makes the game very frustrating. The worst level for me was the Atlantis level. This sequence of platforms right here to be specific. They're all moving and of course landing on moving platforms with tank controls that don't accommodate for adjusting your jumps midair? That's downright unfair, especially since landing in the water can quickly drain all of your health. Uh, there's 10 levels total. The goal in every level is to find and collect all of the pieces of an hourglass and then find the portal at the end. There's a big focus on exploration since you'll spend most of the game looking for these things. Sometimes they're out in the open, sometimes they're tucked in nooks and crannies, and sometimes they'll be dropped by enemies. You'll deal with these freaking guys by using your bubble gun. It'll just fire in a straight line in whatever direction you're facing. You've got limited ammo for it, but running out of ammo won't render the gun useless. Instead, the bubbles from it will simply be a little weaker and the rate of fire will be cut in half. So I guess it's kind of less like an ammunition meter and more like an efficiency meter or an energy meter. The higher your energy, the better the blast will be and if you run out, it'll just be weaker. You'll get more ammunition by finding ammo drops, which are contained within these bubbles, and you'll restore your health the same way by finding heart bubbles. These bubbles can also be dropped by smaller enemies, which can also be dealt with by using the bubble gun, but it's best to use the ground pound move instead. Pressing the X button again in the air will slam Rascal down into the ground, creating a small shockwave that'll take out nearby small enemies. You're gonna be doing this pretty often because of how much the game just loves to relentlessly spawn these enemies into the room. They literally just appear out of thin air all the time and they never stop. It's especially annoying when they appear at your feet and you take damage before you can even react to it. And even taking them out with a ground pound still a pain in the ass because of the third item they can drop. Yeah, other than the ammo and heart bubbles, they can also drop a skull and crossbones bubble that'll have you take damage if you touch it. And since they drop the bubble as soon as you take them out, that means you can absolutely not ground pound on them or you risk taking damage from this potential item drop. You must do it beside them. Can you freaking imagine if jumping on a Goomba had a 1 in 5 chance of doing damage to you? That would be ridiculous, and that's what Rascal does! The bad camera doesn't help either, you'll find yourself tripping all over these little buggers because of it. And are you guys ready for the cherry on the cake? There's also been plenty of times when I'll enter a room and there's an enemy right in the doorway, so when the area loads in, I unavoidably take damage. This is inexcusably bad game design, and it really disappoints me how poorly designed this game is because, and hear me out on this one, there's actually a lot about this game that I think is pretty alright. Some of the levels I actually thought were kinda cool. Okay, so firstly, the 10 levels are divided into two categories. There's past and present. The five levels you'll run through are a medieval level, an Aztec level, an Atlantis level, a pirate ship level, and a wild west level. Once you finish a level, you'll get a key to unlock the next part of the hub world where you'll then access the next level, but revisiting a level will bring you to a present day version of it. Sometimes they're similar with a twist, like the medieval castle being turned into a museum, or the pirate ship in Atlantis levels now being sunken underwater, having you swim through them. Other times, they can be totally different, like the Aztec level, which was turned into a lumberyard, but the coolest one has got to be the Wild West level. You start in the familiar area, except everything looks like a prop. 
Then you go through this door and it reveals that it's actually one of the sets in a film studio. That's really cool. And believe it or not, I actually did enjoy exploring these levels. I thought they were large enough to make exploring enjoyable, but also focused enough to make it hard to get lost. With the high level of detail, rooms often look unique and memorable, so it's easy to navigate and remember which rooms are which. As for the water levels, well, I've definitely played worse. The swimming controls certainly aren't great, but at least they're not as bad as Crocs or Bubsy 3Ds. One weird thing, though, is how it doesn't cap your vertical rotation like most games do when you swim. Instead, you can pull the stick back and rotate all the way back around. Kind of weird thing to have since it can be a little disorienting if you're not aware of it. And while neither of them are very good, it's still a novel idea. Re-exploring the level, but this time it's all underwater. Now entering a level a third time will then pitch you against Cronon in a boss battle. None of them are very difficult, you just run around them in circles and fire at them when the shield goes down. Each version of the fight will just change the moves he uses, starting with a fireball, then throwing hourglasses, and then these annoying boomerang gyro thingies, these are the things that I always got hit by, and then the final fight just has him cycling through all three of the attacks. And he always does them in the exact same order, so it's really easy to memorize the attacks. It might take you a couple of tries because of the bad controls, obviously, but it's not hard to learn and overcome. Alright, so once you've cleared all ten levels and all five boss fights, you'll then unlock the final level. It's just a boss rush, pitting you against five bosses all in one go. Each one is themed after the five worlds. Yeah, this is kind of weird that these guys were not the bosses for each world, and instead they just reused the Cronon fight five times. Why did they do this? It would have made more sense for a boss rush to, you know, actually be against bosses you've already fought before instead of brand new ones. Isn't the point of a boss rush to be like, okay, you've beaten these guys before, you know their moves now. Can you do them all in one go? If they're all brand new bosses you've never seen before, doesn't that kinda defeat the point? Either way, none of them are particularly difficult, but it is really hard to do them all in one life, which is exactly what I had to do because at this point of the game I had no lives left, and once you finish all of the levels, you can't replay them. This means I could not go back and grab more lives, I just had to do this all in one life, and there was nothing I could do about it. And taking damage is going to be inevitable since, you know, you can't dodge things with tank controls. If you're directly facing the boss when they look at you to fire, you have to take the time to rotate yourself away before you can move. Imagine somebody aiming a gun at you and your reaction is this. Like, no, you're not getting away, you're screwed, you're done, you're dead! The process for reloading your game is such a chore, too. You've got to load up the title screen, you hit start, you gotta leave your room, walk to the save room, interact with the save portal, and you wait... and wait... and you load up your game. I don't see why this couldn't have been done from the title screen. It would at least save me the walk from Rascal's room to the save room. Anyway, after some practice and learning an exploit that keeps the bosses from firing their projectiles, I was able to tank through it. I found out that the bosses can't get to you if you're hugging the circumference of the room, and if you keep moving, they won't get a chance to stay still and fire their weapon. It was kind of an inconsistent method, but it was still enough to reach the final Cronon fight with still a solid chunk of health left. And it's exactly the same fight as the previous five times you fought him. Um, okay. Once Cronon's defeated, Rascal then rescues his father and they return home. Credits. Yeah, that definitely wasn't very good. Uh, what I say is the worst game of the console though? God, no, not even close. It's a game with bad controls and a bad camera and that will make the game pretty frustrating sometimes, but even still, there are some things I do kinda like about this game. We gotta talk about that performance, because oh my lord, this game runs at 60 FPS on the PlayStation 1! That is so freaking rare, at least it is for 3D games, you know, not so much 2D games, but you never see that! Especially not with graphics this freaking detailed. The textures are all really high quality for the hardware it's on, and each room is densely filled with unique objects. The set decoration here is really well done. There's a lot of impressive 
details here, like the reflections on the time bubbles, and the reflections on the floor, and the reflections on these textures. Okay, yes, it's just reflections, but man, dude, like, I don't even know how you could have pulled some of this stuff off on the PS1. And even in the most demanding of areas, Rascal manages to keep a frame rate between 40 and 60. The worst it'll dip to is 30, and that blows my freaking mind. The back of the case claims the game has jaw-dropping 3D environments and lightning-fast graphics. Uh, yeah, I I'd say that's accurate. For the time, this was a visually impressive game. Oh, it also says that Rascal was designed by Jim Henson's Creature Shop, huh. That's kind of interesting. Um, that's the company that was originally behind the Muppets, for those that don't know, and they've also gone on to create animatronics and VFX for tons of movies as well. But yeah, this game must be hella optimized, and well, I wasn't surprised when I found out that the director of the game was John Burton. That guy's a programming wizard. He's the founder of Traveler's Tales, and he's now got his own YouTube channel called Game Hut. There he'll break down how he achieved many of his technical feats over the years. It's a really good watch. I don't know if you guys remember my video on Haven I did about a year ago, but uh, yeah, that game wasn't super great in a lot of areas, but I could not help but to have my jaw drop to the floor at those planetary transitions. So, if there's anybody on planet Earth that can get a game this good looking running at 60 on the PlayStation 1, it's John Burton. That guy is an optimization genius. And it honestly breaks my heart to see such a technical achievement being part of such an otherwise bad game. I think there's genuine potential here. I honestly think if the game had good controls, a better camera, and reworked enemy placement, this could have been a pretty good game. So, here's what I think should happen. I want to see Rascal remastered, redone with better controls, camera, tweaked level design, all that good stuff. People often ask me what games I would like to see get remade, and honestly, I'd love to see the games that have potential bleeding through all of those gigantic cracks get remade. A good game can be better, but a bad game with good ideas can become something wonderful for the very first time. Rascal is not the worst game on the PlayStation like people exaggerate it to be. It's just simply a poorly designed game with some cool ideas that weren't executed well. But nevertheless, I still appreciate the technical achievements and I appreciate the vision. At some point in time, somebody had a really good idea up in their head. It's just that sometimes it doesn't come out as well as you'd hope. What can you do? Hi everybody, thank you for watching my video. Uh, if you wanted to see another one on another platform or game, I've got a link right here to another one. And if you'd like to support the show and help me continue doing this as a full-time job, you can donate a dollar a month to my Patreon and get access to the Nitrad podcast and blooper reels and some other bonus stuff. But yeah, thank you guys so much and I'll see you again soon.